is Borski Breton. I'm with the Canadian Parks and Recreation Association, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, just want to make sure that everyone can hear me. So if I could get someone to just type yes in the chat pods, that would be great, and we'll get uh, we'll get rolling shortly. Wonderful, thanks. Well, I'd like to say good morning and good afternoon uh, to everyone who's joined us today. Once again, my name is Vishna zaborski Breton, and I'm with the Canadian Parks and Recreation Association. And I'd like to welcome everyone to this webinar on National Health and Fitness Day. There has been a great deal of interest uh, in today's topic, and as such, we are expecting a full house um, of participants from across Canada, which is uh, just fantastic. Thank you all for joining us. CPRA has proudly been involved with National Health and Fitness Day for several years as a, a member of the steering committee here in Ottawa. We have worked very closely with Senator Green Rain and former Member of Parliament John Weston from British Columbia, along with national partners on this wonderful initiative. And we're very pleased to, to be able to bring this information to you today. CPRA has also hosted other webinars over the years which ideally provide tools, resources, and best practices for parks and recreation practitioners in Canada. Topics have ranged um, from the Framework for Recreation in Canada, the CPRA Professional Development Certification, Connecting Canadians to Nature, and Recreation Programming in the After School Time Period. We have a full listing of our past webinars um, on our website. And we encourage you to uh, have a look. They, they are all recorded and available to be viewed. Um, you can visit our website at www.cpra.ca. And we also encourage you to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, we, can, we post information about our past webinars and upcoming events on uh, those social media outlets. I did want to let you all know that today's webinar is being recorded and as I mentioned, will be posted on the CPRA website uh, for future reference. If you have colleagues or friends who were unable to attend today's session, they can easily access it uh, and view it at their leisure. The recording should be available um, early next week. We will have some questions and answers following today's presentations. And as you will have seen, there's the chat box at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. So we encourage you to type your questions, and uh, we'll keep uh, monitoring them, and presenters will have an opportunity to answer them at the end of the session. There will also be um, evaluation questions, which we uh, would ask you to help us fill out at the end of the uh, session. I'd like to thank the Leisure Information Network for providing us with the technical support today on um, the webinar. I see that a few people are having some difficulty with the audio. And uh, Jennifer Pelche is on the call with us, and, and I know she's going to be working, um, as always, to fix any issues that we might, um, might encounter. Today's uh, presentation, there will also be uh, opportunities for you to participate in the discussion through polls that will pop up on your screen. Um, Jennifer, we have uh, poll number one, which uh, perhaps you can put up on the screen for us right now, give folks uh, an idea. Well, perhaps Jennifer's a little bit busy with the audio issues. Um, okay, so in the meantime, I will perhaps just move on and welcome our presenters today. We have with us Marilyn McIver, who is the National Health and Fitness Day Project Coordinator. She comes from us, uh, to us from Ottawa. She spends uh, her time between Ottawa and uh, British Columbia. We have Marta Greger, the Community Coordinator uh, with the City of Prince George in British Columbia. Michelle Cousar, the Supervisor of Community Recreation in Collingwood, Ontario. And we have Steve Burns, the general manager of Queen's Place Emira Center in Liverpool, Nova Scotia. Uh, I'd like to thank all of our presenters in advance for sharing their experiences and their stories of National Health and Fitness Day uh, with all of us. Um, Jennifer, is there an opportunity to put poll number one up on the screen? 
Thank you. So just a quick question for you uh, before we get going. Have you heard of Canada's National Health and Fitness Day before you learned about this webinar? So we'll just give everyone a second to add their answer. And we can see that um, we have about 65, 66% of uh, folks on the call who have heard of National Health and Fitness Day, which is, which is fantastic. That means uh, the message is getting out. And we have a portion that are, are learning uh, about the initiative. And uh, we're very pleased to provide that information to you today. To start things off, we also have a video message from Senator Nancy Green. Um, and uh, perhaps before we move on to the video, uh, Jennifer, can you also add poll number two? We just have a quick question for you um, about your knowledge. Does uh, anyone know who Senator Nancy Green is? Well, a quick, uh, a quick showing is uh, telling us that everyone who's participating in the poll does know that the senator is Canada's most decorated alpine skier in, uh, in history. That's wonderful. So we're going to hear um, a message from the senator right now. And following that, we're going to move on um, to Marilyn, who's going to start uh, the presentation today. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us. And um, I hope that we have a, a great session. I'd encourage you all to just um, turn your speakers on so you can hear the uh, message from the senator. Okay, so hello everybody, I'm Marilyn McIver. I um, have some things to tell you quickly. I'm gonna tell you a bit about the background of this project, a little bit more about the bill that Nancy referred to, tell you who our partners are, and also uh, share with you some of the tools that we've developed to make uh, celebrating National Health and Fitness Day easier for everybody. So this whole thing really springboarded off the uh, 2010 Vancouver Olympics and the enthusiasm that was generated there. The directors, uh, we've established a foundation now, and the directors are John Weston, who was the MP for Whistler, Pierre Lafontaine, who is now the CEO of Cross Country Skiing Canada, and Phil Marsh is a running room um, regional manager running coach uh, here in Ottawa, and then Senator Nancy Green Rain. Together, we have developed this national, this parliamentary fitness initiative, where we uh, encourage all the MPs and senators to look after their own fitness while they're in Ottawa, and to act as role models for the rest of the country. And so, we take them running once a week, swimming once a week, and we have a variety of events on the hill, cross-country ski day on the hill, swim day on the hill, bike day on the hill, all as lead-ups to and engaging them in National Health and Fitness Day. I don't need to spend much time talking to you people about the problem that, uh, you know, of inactivity, the obesity, and the cost to the healthcare system. But when we're looking for solutions, what the evidence points us to is socio-ecological solutions, like you know, 
countrywide. We took a lot of our uh, direction from the Active Canada 2020 report, and you know, particularly the recommendation to involve the change makers, which you know I see as all the people in the different levels of government, and maximize community-wide campaigns. That's the kind of thing we're talking about today. So this is just a picture of John Weston and Senator Nancy Greenrain hol holding up the bill here in her office. And what it does is it calls on, it's the federal government calling on the municipal governments and everybody to proclaim the day and mark the day. We're actually up to now 244 communities have uh, proclaimed the day, including all the big ones from coast to coast. And uh, there's a map on our website that I'll point you to that uh, tells you you can check whether or not your community has proclaimed the day. The other thing I want to point out is that when the bill was uh, passed in December of 2014, uh, so that was the previous session of uh, Parliament, right? Every single senator and MP stood up and voted in favor of it. And so they are your partners in this project as well. Feel free to call upon your senators and MPs to help you in your in your grassroots community operations. Um, this is an event that we had last February, and I, it's a good picture for me to highlight who I think are some of the important partners. At that time, Rana Ambrose was the Minister of Health. As you know, she's now the leader of the um, Conservative Party. That's John Weston and Senator Nancy Green Rain. But a guy like uh, Scott Haldane is the head of uh, YMCA Canada, although he's actually moved on from that position recently. That's Elio Antunis. Participation has been a fantastic supporter and partner of ours. We have some uh, sort of informal arrangements with some companies, and one person who's interested in helping us is that Michael Rossi back in there. He's the president of Adidas Canada. The other people we were engaging in this, Chad Hartnell, is with the Public Health Agency of Canada in their active living unit, you know, who is, has direct ties, of course, with the Minister of Health. And, and he's the, the civil servant. He, you know, he's the bureaucrat. He stays on after the election. That's me over there. I look like um, I'm a, you know, a retired public health nurse, and I always say we all look the same. The tools that we're gonna, I wanted to highlight for you is on our website, we do have a letter for you to use to approach your mayor. Um, the video is overlapping the webinar, because, okay, Jennifer will fix that. Yeah. <laughs> we have a letter uh, to use to approach your mayor. Um, that's a good tool for you. This is the website that uh, we are using now. It's uh, part of Senator Nancy Green Reigns, but we've also just got access to www.nhfd.ca. Just nhfd.ca. Participation houses the tools that you want to have a look at. And um, just going back to the tools, this is what a lot of the graphics look like. This is a poster for June 4th, is National Health and Fitness Day in 2016. That's my Gmail address. And once we get our communications all sorted, we will have an email like marilyn at nhfd.ca. And that is basically what I wanted to, oh, our Twitter handle, at nhfdcan. And thank you very much for your time. I'm going to pass you on uh, over to Marta. Thanks so much, Marilyn. Um, and yes, we're going to move on to Marta. She's coming to us from the city of uh, Prince George, and um, she's going to give us um, their take on National Health and Fitness Day in British Columbia and how they celebrated it last year. Great, thanks. Um, I just want to begin by saying thanks to all our webinar organizers for putting this on, and to everyone participating today. Hopefully, I'm coming in loud and clear. My name is Marta Gregor, and I'm a community coordinator in our community partnerships division at the city of Prince George. I'd just like to put up a, a quick map of where the heck Prince George is. <laughs> We're kind of north central British Columbia, and we have a population of around 75,000 people. So the next slide shows, um, I thought I'd talk first about what we did before I talk about how we did it. So you can see we had a proclamation from our mayor, Linton Hall, at the time for last year. 
Um, this was our first ever proclamation for National Health and Fitness Day, so pretty exciting. And then this is our poster of the events that we held that day, so Saturday, June 6th of last year. We had about 10 events all together, and we were really happy with the variety we ended up getting. June's a beautiful time of year here, and we had some great outdoor activities like yoga, Zumba, and Tai Chi in the park. We had a family nature walk at one of our local parks, a few sessions of that. And then we had some indoor activities as well, everything from table tennis to martial arts lessons to dry land ice skating, East Coast swing, so a nice variety in, um, in the activities, indoor and outdoor, the types of activities, and then the age ranges as well. Some of the activities you know, were targeted more towards kids, some towards teens, some towards adults and some towards whole families that they could participate together. Our goal was to have everything free. So all the events were, were free for, for the community. And we had a, a mix of um, organizations kind of putting these events on. So some nonprofit groups, such as the Y and Pacific Sport, and then some, all the way to some commercial um, businesses, such as the martial arts lessons. So a good mix there. And as far as venues, um, city parks for the outdoor locations, and then the organization's venues for, for some of the indoor, indoor activities, such as archery and the martial arts and the East Coast swing. We've got our partners listed on the bottom of this poster. And I'm going to just talk a little bit about that, because that is kind of the key to the success of our event anyway. Um, we've got a lot of amazing partners in our community. We're very lucky. Um, these partnerships allow us to work together on many projects, and we're very lucky to have these partnerships because events like this would not exist without them. For National Health and Fitness Day, we specifically worked with the three partners listed on the slide here. I'll tell you a little bit about each one. The cities had great partnerships with these organizations over many years, and we're lucky to work with their great staff. They're all very knowledgeable and very keen. So it uh, works out really well. First one there is Pacific Sport Northern BC. They're a nonprofit organization in our community. They're a leader in physical literacy programming, sport and athlete development, as well as coach training. And they played a really big role in our 2015 event. They allotted staff time to the organization of the event. They had some budget that they were able to put towards the event, um, mostly for the poster design and the printing of hard copies. And they also hosted the registration for some of the day's events. Our other partner is the YMCA of Northern BC. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with the great work the Y does across Canada. Also a major role in our event, dedicated some staff time to the organization of the event, as well as the marketing and promotion. And also staff time and resources in the delivery of the event. So a lot of the activities we held on June 6th were either using a YMCA facility, some of them were using a YMCA facility, or they were run by um, YMCA instructors and leaders. So that was great. And then Northern Health is our regional health authority, also a great partner. And their role in this event was some support during the organizational stage. They did some marketing and promotion through their networks. And they also donated some great door prizes, which is always fun to have for the day of the event as well, handing out some swag. So Sports Day in Canada, I wanted to quickly mention. So a national day across Canada in November. And the city of Prince George had hosted a Sports Day event for, for many years now. And we're very lucky to have done that because we used that as our model for National Health and Fitness Day. And in a nutshell, it was just a day, again, of offering free activities to the community to different ages that people could participate in and maybe try something, something new. Um, and I also wanted to mention the Canada Winter Games. So in February of last year, our city hosted a very successful Canada Winter Games. And this brought a great energy to the city. And it just kind of made 2015 an ideal time to host a, a first ever National Health and Fitness Day event. And we just used that energy and momentum from the games and just kind of rode with it. The city was already kind of excited and buzzing with enthusiasm around sport. So perfect year to launch into National Health and Fitness Day. All right, so this is kind of the, the nitty gritty of it, our timeline. Basically, in late February, early March, we met with our partners. We set up a general plan, set out our timelines, and figured out who would take what role in this event's organization. 
we booked our park space for the outdoor events, making sure we had that secured. And then we drafted a letter to our local sporting organizations. So this letter included information about National Health and Fitness Day, a link to the website at the time, information about what we were looking for, which is basically free opportunities for the community to try out their sport. And then we also offered options for registration if they did want to have a registration process. So some activities like yoga in the park, we didn't need registration as you know, as many people wanted to show up, we could we could accommodate, whereas other activities that were inside had a limited space. We wanted to have a, a pre-registration and process to make sure that uh, we didn't exceed our required numbers for, for those activities. And we also let the local sporting organizations know that if they hosted an activity, that this event would get a lot of promotion in our community and it would get their name out. So it's a great way to market their sport and their organization and hopefully drawing new visits to their sport and their organization, you know, and sparking new interest in their in their club. In April, we sent out these letters mostly through email. We sent them out to our city contacts. We already work with a lot of local sporting organizations just through the general work we do. So we just contacted them and said, "Hey, there's this great opportunity, National Health and Fitness Day, good time to promote your sport, let's give you the information. So the city connected with our um, community contacts and the Y Pacific Sport Northern Health also reached out to theirs. So between the four of us, we had quite a big reach in trying to attract um, organizations to host something. So through April, lots of back and forth communication, of course, getting things set up. We set April 27th as our deadline for um, submissions for the activities so that we'd have everything finalized. We requested our proclamation from the mayor's office and we were in touch with Maryland's office for National Health and Fitness Day logos as well. So in May the poster was done, Pacific Sport took on the design and printing, and then it was marketing, 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 marketing. Um, some internal promotion of course with all the organizations. And then external promotion, we hosted the information and the poster on all of our websites and on our social media, which is a great way to reach people. We emailed our poster out to the schools in our city. We're lucky to have a partnership with our school district where we are able to promote special events like this. And then we also put the poster up on our tourism local Tourism Prince George website. And a lot of our radio stations and TV stations here have, you know, a website and they'll have a, like an online events board and it's usually free to list events on there, so that's what we did. And often even the radio personalities pick up on these um, events and make mention of it on the air, which is great. And then of course lots of legwork. I had a stack of posters in my car, so everywhere I went, whether it was out for coffee or if I went out swimming, I'd put a, a poster up on a, a bulletin board. So this is kind of what our web presence looked like. The city of Prince George actually has a page devoted to Sports Day and National Health and Fitness Day. So we host this page all year round. And this is really, really useful as uh, you can't always get a physical poster out to people, but you might be able to send a link or refer to a link somewhere. And then, you know, people, everyone with their phones and computers can click on that link and have access to all the information and as well as our contact information on our city website. So here's a few pictures from some of our outdoor events, um, some of the classes out in the park. We had a beautiful, beautiful day and that helps out a lot too um, for the outdoor activities. So uh, we even had a local radio station come out for a bit and bring some water bottles and you know some stickers and stuff for the kids, which was really great too, and gave us a bit more publicity at the time. And then just to wrap up, so after the event, um, basically it was just touching base with everyone, with all the activity hosts. What was your attendance like? Did it go well? Was it worthwhile? Did you have fun? I think that's important. And would you do it again? And same with our partners. Um, our three partners, basically the same questions. And all in all, it was definitely a success. I believe we did cancel one of the 10 programs for just not having enough uh, attendance. But everything else went um, great. Everybody was really happy with it. And everyone was really keen on doing it again this year. Looking back, what could be improved, I think, you know, just broadening marketing 
in general is always good. If we can try and even have a tiny budget towards maybe getting some radio ads or, or something in the newspaper, that's always something we can do to expand. So I think our key to success is definitely the partnerships and the community, working with others to make a successful event. You don't have to take it on alone. So if you have those community partners, work together. I think that's the way to go. And also work with your internal communications department. They're experts in promoting municipal events, and they could definitely help you out with uh, promoting yours. So there's my contact information if anyone does have any questions or wants any more information, I'm very happy to share. Um, even if it's after the webinar, feel free to drop my name or email and phone number down and be happy to hear from you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Marta. Um, is there uh, any quick questions for Marta on her um, events in Prince George? Uh, we'll take a moment to, to see if anyone has a specific uh, question at this time for Marta. Um, prior to moving on to our next presenter. I see some folks are furiously typing, so we'll give them, uh, we'll give them a minute. Uh, oh, someone from the town of Innisfil is asking, yes, the PowerPoints will be shared after the webinar, so um, we, will, we will send that out to everyone. And Barbara is asking, uh, Marta, do you also promote MOVE for Health Day in May? We have not so far. Um, it's definitely something we looked at last year, and I'm actually glad of the reminder. We'll have to we'll have to take a look, but no, we have not done anything as of yet. Okay, we'll take another question from Roy. As he's typing furiously right now. <laughs> okay, Roy is asking, are there resource materials on physical activity that are available for participants? Um, I believe, Marilyn, um, you have some toolkits that are available? Uh, so, uh, yeah, I've unmuted. And um, the toolkits are best, there's a link off our website to the toolkits, but they're also available on ParticipAction's website. But Roy and others, um, I think if you search through the ParticipAction website, you're going to find even more stuff, um, like Canada's Physical Activity Guidelines. Um, you know, what, what we have put on, what we've put up is uh, suggestions for what to do on National Health and Fitness Day, but there's there's lots of other uh, materials available on ParticipAction's website. Perfect. Thanks, Marilyn. OK, perhaps we will. Thank you very much, Marta, for your presentation. And perhaps we will uh, move on to um, Michelle. And Michelle is, is joining us from Collingwood. Thank you. Uh, I'm really excited to be here today. Um, uh, for Sorry. those who don't know where, oh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, if you don't know where Collingwood is, we are two hours north of Toronto. Um, we live in a playground type area, in that and nature is definitely a playground here. We have Blue Mountain Resort, uh, we have Georgian Bay, so we are considered a four season destination. So there's lots of activity to tap into in our beautiful town of Collingwood. Uh, I've been with the town for 15 years and uh, started as a receptionist and have moved my way into recreation, which is uh, definitely my passion. Uh, wanted to start very much like Marta, where do we begin? Uh, to show you that you can kind of start at a, a low level if you're really not sure where to even begin, you just offer something. So uh, on August 12th in 2013, our council received a letter from our local MP, Dr. Kelly Leach, and she was requesting our participation and support of uh, National Health and Fitness Day as the bill was still moving through. Um, from that, uh, staff were directed to provide a report of what could we do. Uh, so we put a staff report through in December um, and proposed uh, participation. And our participation was uh, what activities basically could we offer and could we offer them for free. Uh, so we concluded that there was um, definitely an opportunity to do free activities uh, and it, that it fell very nicely in with um, what we were already doing for June as Recreation and Parks Month here in Collingwood. 
Uh, so we um, we went ahead with it. Uh, I was actually getting ready to head on maternity leave just before our first National Health and Fitness Day event. So um, I kind of set our person up and they went with it. So on March 27th, um, our council also um, provided a letter to FCM endorsing National Health and Fitness Day in 2014. Uh, this was our first um, day on June 7th, uh, so it may not be very clear, but we offered uh, free activities at our Centennial Aquatic Centre, which um, for those who are not aware, we converted our outdoor pool into an indoor facility uh, using a sprung structure. Uh, so this was actually our first full summer of operating that pool as an indoor pool. So we took advantage of that and had an open lane swim, um, free aquafit, uh, a swim with the mayor, so a big community swim, and we had our mayor there uh, participating, um, and then an, an open public swim as well. So we, we did offer two aquafit classes that day so people could try aquafit, um, something, maybe something new for them, uh, and then uh, got our council involved as well, uh, which then led to building in 2015. Uh, we um, tapped into uh, Maryland's resources uh, for the posters and created this poster. Um, from uh, our feedback in um, 2014, we wanted to offer some more opportunities and also get our sport community involved. So we, uh, in, I sent out an, an invite to all of our sport um, organizations, local sport organizations, and invited them uh, to participate in National Health and Fitness Day. Uh, what we did was we partnered up with the downtown BIA, um, who offers a Saturday morning farmer's market in one of our parking lots, so the parking lot got shut down. Uh, they gave us a portion of the parking lot, and uh, we continued on the farmer's market in that we had um, sport organization booths set up in the area uh, and then had demos uh, and our demo um, schedule is on our poster. So we had a tennis demo um, which tied in nicely with our pickleball demo which was a blast. It was really well received. Uh, we had one of our local CrossFit gyms uh, set up a uh, demonstration and actually geared it really towards kids because they do a, a kids um, class and uh, the kids had a lot of fun and some of the some of the adults got in on that. Uh, we have a local uh, cheerleading squad that actually travels uh, across North America for competition, and they did a demo for us. And I think one of my most favorite things to watch was actually our wheelchair basketball demo. We um, partnered up with the Children's Treatment Network and the YMCA, who had uh, some basketball chair, uh, wheelchair basketball, uh, sorry, basketball chairs um, at their facility, and uh, they allowed us to use them, and we had people uh, giving wheelchair basketball a try. We had some of the uh, kids that had been participating in the program come down to show people how it was done, and it was really, really well re received, and from that actually helped uh, build their basketball program further. Uh, we have um, 72 kilometers of trails in Collingwood. So we tapped into that resource and had a cycle with the tra with uh, council on the trails, and had that end up at our Centennial Aquatic Center, um, where in our parking lot we closed off a portion of our parking lot and had um, a safety bike rodeo, which was a partnership with the local health unit and OPP, and then we had a free swim at the pool. Uh, we had 12 organizations that participated uh, in the uh, activity booth area, so they highlighted their clubs with, um, with their promotional booths, and uh, some got some registrations, uh, some just got to promote their activity. We had winter and summer sports that participated, which was great. Um, and that was pretty much our 2015. Um, that was really exciting and which has led us into our planning already for 2016. Um, we will be partnering again with our organizations. We have a newly formed uh, Collingwood Sport Alliance, so a new sport council in town um, that we are partnering with. Uh, we are um, one of the Healthy Kids Community Challenge communities, so we are partnering with our uh, Healthy Kids Project Manager to um, offer some more activities. Uh, where we will have free skates and swims again. Uh, we want to do some intro programs, so Tai Chi, pickleball mini tournaments, uh, wheelchair tennis demo this time, uh, as well as wheelchair basketball, and we would like to see some more involvement with our council. 
sorry. And that is all I have for now. Perfect. Thanks so much, Michelle. Um, that sounds like it was a, a really great uh, event last year. Um, are there any, um, any questions for Michelle at this time? And um, feel free, uh, even during uh, the presentations, to start typing your questions into the chat box. And uh, we'll refer to them towards the end of uh, the, the presentation. So um, you know, if you think of something as things are going along. Uh, Barbara is asking, um, during the events, do you typically see regular customers, or, or are they new uh, folks? Well, I think by having it beside our farmer's market, we actually saw some new people, which was great. Uh, we also have, it was still, um, people were still touring up to our town, traveling up to our town, so we were getting out of town people um, again, so we were tapping into them. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, I would say, if I were to give a percentage, I would say 70 to 75% of the people were people that always come out to everything that we do. Mm, that's great. Uh, Jennifer is asking um, if you um, that it was wonderful that you had adaptive sports. Uh, did you make a decision to make accessible sports available, or did it just happen organically? It is actually something I'm very passionate about. Uh, I have a family member who was a member of the National Wheelchair Basketball Team. So for me, I am always looking at accessible sport options. Mm, that's great. And, uh, and Megan is asking um, if you planned any of your events around your age demographics, um, or is it an all-age event? Are there specific it's pretty much all ages, yeah. We, we, did, we had a lot of families that came out, but when I looked at what we had come out for Aquafit, that was definitely hitting our 55-plus uh, demographic. Mm -hmm. and, and were there any events that were better attended than others? Uh, I would say our, our um, bike safety rodeo was not as well as attended as I had hoped. Everything downtown, I think because people were already downtown and milling around downtown, that's where we, we got the, um, the traffic because we were there. they were there for the farmer's market, so they're popping over to see what we were doing. Um, for 2016, we're actually looking at a different location. We have an old um, railway station that's our museum. And it has a great events uh, field there, and it taps into our trails. And uh, we're looking at actually moving everything over there um, and putting on something much bigger than what we did. Um, but I think on that particular day, our traffic was people that were already coming downtown for what was happening around our downtown area. OK, that, that makes a little sense. Um, and uh, Sylvia, we'll just take one more question from Sylvia before we move to Steve. And she was asking uh, if you tied your event to Juna's uh, Recreation Month in Ontario. Yeah, uh, so what we do, we always do the calendar for Juna's Recreation and Parks Month. So um, on our calendar, we uh, say stuff like, you know, have you visited one of our 23 parks? Have you uh, tapped into our trail system? You know, those sorts of things. So it was on on our Juniors Recreation and Parks Month calendar on that date, uh, showing that there would be lots of activities happening. That's, that's great. And, and that's one of the things from CPRA that um, is, is such a wonderful um, connection to National Health and Fitness Day is that we do uh, celebrate Juniors Parks and Recreation Month. And many of our uh, member organizations, like Parks and Rec, Parks and Rec Ontario, um, and then hence Collingwood uh, as a member of, of their association, um, mm -hmm. So it's such a wonderful connection between those two uh, initiatives in the month of June. So yeah. perhaps um, we will um, thank Michelle for her presentation, and uh, we'll give Steve an opportunity. Uh, he's joining us from Nova Scotia. And then following Steve's uh, presentation, we'll, again, we'll open up the floor to questions. Um, so keep typing those questions, and uh, we'll be sure we can get to everyone. So over to you, Steve. Well, thanks for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's just wonderful to have an opportunity to speak to you today on behalf of the staff here at Queen's Place Amera Centre and the region of Queen's Municipality. Now, our event took place here on location at Queen's Place Amera Centre in Liverpool. And just to give you an idea of where Liverpool is, approximately an hour and a half from the capital city of Halifax, Nova Scotia, in southern Nova Scotia, our immediate community, um, we have approximately 6,000 uh, folks that live in the immediate community. And overall, our population is 11,000. So we're small but uh, mighty in stature. Um, a bit of history on Queen's Place uh, Amera Center. 
Queens Place Amira Center opened in December 2011, and we have we are a multi-purpose facility. So we have an arena, we have a two-lane indoor track, fitness center, and studio, and we have some wonderful trail and green spaces surrounding our facility. So the facility became uh, a real uh, great option to host our first natural national health and fitness day. And just in saying that, you know, staff came across this opportunity and activated it while researching uh, for potential events and activity for the facility. Um, again, this ties right into the act, which is what we are all about, health and fitness for all here in our community. So our activities that day, they were staged activities, uh, starting with uh, a community walk on our two-lane track inside the facility as the weather outside was a little inclement. We had some free fitness classes for youth and adults. Uh, we offered a free family skate. And uh, Canadian Olympian Adrian Power was our special guest. And she provided an inspiring message to participants with a power talk. Um, we offered healthy snack options and beverages from watermelon to water. And we had a local region of Queens uh, producer of blueberry juice provide samples. We also had draws throughout the day. And at the end of the day, we opened the two-lane track for free access for the remainder of the day. Again, the events were staged in a way that the timing would allow families to have the children go to, the, go to a children's fitness class, an adult go to the uh, power talk, et cetera. So it was, it was staged so everyone in the family could participate. Overall, for execution, uh, our plan cost approximately $550. So what a great investment to promote uh, health and fitness and our arena and our fitness aspects of the offer here at Queens Place. We had some in-kind services provided by the local Best Western Plus in the form of a room night for our special guest. And we received, we were really pleased to receive uh, permission from Adrian's representatives to ask her to participate. And I believe Adrian's on the call here today listening. So hello to Adrian. Uh, a facility sponsor uh, gave us some prizes for draws, and locally produced Van Dyke's blueberry juice was sampled with healthy snacks that were prepared by staff. So many of the areas of our facility were designated for use, our fitness studio for classes, our arena and track for a walk and a family skate, our lobby and concessions area for a reception and the power talk. And in other presentations, I've heard the key is promotion. You have to sell, have to sell your event. So promotion for the event included Region of Queens and Queens Place websites, our Twitter and Facebook feeds. Uh, we made sure we had um, stories and advertising put into our local paper, the Advance, and the South Shore Breaker paper. We had radio advertising on South Shore Radio CKBW and locally with QCCR Radio. And the CKBW folks interviewed Adrian, and she did a segment on the sports show that preceded the event. CKBW also followed up by promoting the event that morning again. We also we put notices around the local area and into our schools, and again, posters and, uh, and flyers went into local businesses. Overall, we had about 100 people that participated, so you know, that in itself you know, is a call to action. You have to start at a point. So the next slide is just uh, some photos of our star. Uh, Olympian Adrian Power as she attended the event. And, and just before you know, I, I introduce Adrian, I give you a few snippets on Adrian. Adrian was introduced by a staff member at the time and local resident Chelsea Whalen. And Chelsea uh, was a graduate of Florida State University and specializing in javelin and shot put. And she's also a member of the national team. Uh, she's in recovery from surgery right now, so she's, uh, she's training towards her future goals. But Adrian um, was born and raised in Nova Scotia in a small community of East Chador on the eastern shore of Nova Scotia. And at a young age, she became really enamored by athletics. And she loved to compete with the boys and beat them at their own game. And if you could have been here to hear her inspiring story, I think you would have been both entertained and just about brought to tears. She was tremendous. Adrian attended Dalhousie University and was a member of the track team, and in 2003 joined Team Canada. She became a member of the 2008 Beijing Olympic team. She won a bronze at the 2010 Commonwealth Games and participated in the Pan Am Games, so she has many, many accomplishments. 
Her message, though, was powerful. She described her growth as a person and an athlete, and she was able to bring a reality uh, to the folks in the room on the challenges of today's rural communities and provide insight on how we can create opportunity for individuals of all ages. Um, it was a very emotional, inspiring message, and we were very fortunate to have her headline our event, and we really value her friendship to this day. This is just a picture of Adrian as she, uh, as she did her presentation, and in her hands she's holding a small, very, very, very small uh, Team Canada jersey. Um, you can also refer to the Twitter link provided. Those are a few more pictures on the Twitter feed. So our takeaways and learnings from this past year would be, number one, where this was a facility-driven event, we, we want to plan out a little farther in advance of the date. Uh, we want to engage other areas of our municipality because we have some wonderful natural waterways, beaches, parks, and infrastructure from one end of our county to the other. Um, being smaller in scope, again, our population is spread out, but we should be leveraging the activities that can be held through a week, summing them all up on, a, on the particular Saturday, and making it a powerful event from the sum of, of all the parts. We will encourage you know, greater local business support and just improve our messaging to clubs, such as you know, your bike clubs, your canoe clubs, walking clubs, and out to the schools. Um, we want to look at the province and see if there's any health and wellness grants or any other particular grants that could you know, help us uh, enhance, enhance the event. And it is good to recruit a celebrity spokesperson. It gives you a little bit of a hook. Those can be local people, or you can reach out and, uh, and reach for the stars. And we were very, very fortunate to have both Adrian and Chelsea uh, on our roster here. So of course, this year, we're, we want to repeat the wins of 2015. And we just encourage you all on Saturday, June 4th, 2016, bring your week of events together, if you're a small community, celebrate the success of all, get lots of photos, another thing which we would like more of, just get up, get out, and get active as one community, and have fun. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, uh, I appreciate your, your uh, presentations and all of your efforts in, um, in National Health and Fitness Day uh, activities last year. Um, at this time, I'd love to open up the floor to more questions um, from participants. And um, while we're waiting for folks to type in more questions, perhaps, uh, Jennifer, we can just uh, put up our last poll. We just have one more question for you. Um, and we were just wondering, when is National Health and Fitness Day? And uh, just to check if you were all listening. <laughs> and by the looks of it, uh, I think everyone's getting the correct answer. It is the first Saturday in June every year. And while we're answering, uh, taking some questions from folks, um, Jennifer, perhaps you can also uh, add the evaluation questions. And I would uh, invite our presenters to unmute their lines and um, perhaps there are other questions that are needing answers. We have a question from Barbara, and she's asking if there are any um, anything specific. Oh, grants. Are there grants available specifically for this event? Marilyn, perhaps this question could be for you. Well, this is a good question. I wish there were. Um, we you know, operate on a shoestring budget here, and thanks to the good graces of our partners, we've got this far in particular participation. Um, so I have to say no, and I'm thinking others on the call might have ideas. Well, Meryl, this is Steve, and, uh, and, and we did not uh, investigate from the, you know, provincially whether there were actual grants that we could tap into, but we certainly will this year on a provincial level. Uh, yeah, I think, I'm, sorry, oh, I do sorry, have go a ahead, few Marilyn. things that have come to mind uh, while listening to you folks. Um, and, and I will go back to the directors and, and talk about the idea of having you know, some kind of a seed grant. Because, of course, I'm a retired public health nurse, and I know exactly what it feels like to have my hands tied for the sake of 50 bucks. If I just had 50 bucks, I could get going. But what I, I while I have the airtime is I wanted to, to 
tell you folks that we are emerging on Facebook, National Health and Fitness Day, over the next few days to weeks. You'll see more of a presence there. So please uh, like us on Facebook. And also, we do have a, a nice relationship with the Olympics. Of course, you know, with Nancy being an Olympic champion, and, and I have some personal connections there too, um, you know, with the t high levels at the Olympics, and we're working to get out to all the Olympians to ask them to reach out to their, the mayor of the town where they, which is their hometown, um, or the town where they find themselves on National Health and Fitness Day. So um, feel free to approach uh, your local Olympians. A lot of them will have heard about it. We have the same issue with celebrities. If we're going to get the MPs and senators to come to an event on the Hill, we're better off if we have uh, some kind of a celebrity. So fortunately, we've had uh, Eric Carlson come to an event when we partnered with Movember. Uh, Jean-Luc Brassard is a chef de mission for the Olympics down in uh, Brazil this year, and he was at Bike Day on the Hill. So I encourage you to do the same, because that can be very, uh, very much of a draw. There's some folks from British Columbia um, just saying that um, in, in May they, um, they celebrate, uh, let me get the name of it right, it's Move for Health Day in May. So it's, it's always difficult when, when you're trying to plan multiple events. Um, I don't know if, if others have some, Marta or Michelle or Steve, who have planned events, um, if there's you know, tricks to the trade of, of planning multiples um, you know, at the same time. I think one thing is um, it doesn't the, the events don't have to be big. It's just nice to to be able to provide something. So we don't always have to think big scale for for multiple events, especially when they're back to back. So maybe you can year by year focus on one more than the other as far as making it a bigger event, but um, still trying to do even just something small scale for the second event. I agree with Marta. I mean, the first year we just offered our already existing activities for free that day. So just opening up to people who maybe uh, paying admission was a barrier. We just wanted to make sure that everyone was getting an opportunity to be active. Absolutely. And um, we just have uh, um, someone from Alberta letting us know that the, in Alberta there's the Community Choose Well seed grants um, that are available through ARPA, um, their website. And so that's another, um, another place that folks can go and, and look into granting opportunities there. So we just have a few more people um, typing. And um, um, the question, there's a question from Stephanie asking if participants need to sign waivers before participating in any of the events? We didn't in Collingwood. We, we did not in Prince George, no. Okay. Well, that's great. Uh, we have a few more people typing, and uh, I appreciate everyone um, filling out those uh, evaluation questions. We're always looking for more content for CPRA webinars. So if you have any ideas um, for um, you know, anything else in your region that could be highlighted or in your province or territory, um, we look forward to uh, hearing those suggestions. Uh, they said that they did not um, have participants sign waivers, just to be clear. OK, we just have a, a couple more people uh, typing questions. We have some time, so I don't want to uh, rush everyone. It's a wonderful, such a wonderful initiative. And um, getting feedback from um, folks on the ground is always so helpful. So we'll just give folks another couple minutes. Marilyn, if there was any other um, parting words that you wanted to share with everyone, feel free. I guess what I'm sitting here thinking about is liability insurance because it's very confusing, I, and I think it's an evolving um, situation. And um, as we activate people all across the country, I think we're going to learn more about liability insurance and how it works. And I'm thinking, um, you know, we can share that that 
knowledge as we learn, but um, I think that's an interesting question. When we do bike day on the hill here, we have the MPs and senators on bicycles. I get them to sign waivers. And a waiver doesn't necessarily protect you in court as much as it's a documentation of communication. That, you know, I told you you were going to ride your bike on a trail and you might fall off your bike and be careful. Um, and we also have liability insurance. But if we are, you know, doing something where there's very little risk, um, but also it's not our bag to be um, taking people to do physical activity. When you work for a recreation department, it is your bag. And so you've probably got all kinds of insurance around that, whether it's in your rec center or out in the park. But those are the kinds of things that we can learn about together. That's great. Thanks, Marilyn. Um, just noting a, um, a message from Rebecca um, Tenacliff in, um, from BCRPA, um, just um, stating that oh, I lost it. That there's uh, funding in British Columbia for BC Family Day, um, uh, which provides $1,000 per community site for recreational activities. So there's there's some opportunities in, in BC um, for funding as well. And others are just adding some information about their um, funding in, in um mm -hmm. These are good answers. Mm -hmm. For sure. So there, there are definitely a uh, dollar. Tiny has a, has a large budget. Yeah, that's fantastic. It really is. So I think sharing sharing this type of information is is always so helpful, um, because I think other you know different municipalities and and cities and townships um, run things differently. So it's always wonderful to hear what's happening in uh, in different parts of Canada. Okay, so perhaps um, at this time I just want to. Um, acknowledge everyone's um, participation and um, attendance today. Um, CPRA would like to thank Senator Nancy Green for her uh, video presentation. Marilyn, Marta, Michelle, and Steve, um, thank you very much for taking the time to share your experiences on National Health and Fitness Day with uh, our webinar participants. Um, it's such a fantastic initiative, and we, we do encourage all of you to take away from this uh, webinar and make National Health and Fitness Day Saturday, June 4th, um, um, a great day in your regions. Uh, I'd like to thank the participants who joined us for this webinar. And uh, once again, a recording will be made available to you all. And it will be posted on our social media sites and websites. And should you have any further questions, feel free to uh, contact um, CPRA, info at cpra.ca or contact Marilyn McIver in Senator uh, Green Rain's office um, or any of the presenters directly. So with that, um, I would just like to say thanks again and uh, wish you all uh, a wonderful day. You there, Marilyn? I am. Uh, I can say thank you very much as well. Um, now, Senator Nancy Greenrain is in her office here, and I'm just going to um, this phone does not have a speaker function, so she's just going to speak with you uh, directly for a moment. Stand by. It's okay. You got her. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Hi. Thank you very Hello, much for um, for your involvement, and Marilyn will bring me up to date on everything that you've talked about. Sorry, I couldn't have been here for the entire web webinar, but that's the way it goes in Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate your uh, your video, Senator, and and the participants are just um, they're hearing your message and um, and they're hearing this message as well. Those that are still on the line with us, so uh, we thank you very much for that um, and and all the work that you're doing on National Health and Fitness Day in Ottawa. And well, you know, the you know, it is really a nonpartisan effort, and uh, I've been uh, very energized in the last uh, 
few months because there's a whole bunch of new parliamentarians here who are very keen and who are wanting to get involved and carry the message back to their municipalities. And, you know, there's there's so much in the news these days about the inactivity issue and the rising rates of obesity. And, uh, you know, our timing is, is really good. And what you guys are doing is, is so necessary to connect people to the what's available in the communities. So thanks again for all you're doing. I'm going to pass you back to Marilyn and um, and keep up the great work. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I think we're done. Thank you. Thank you all, and uh, we we'll, we will officially sign off now. Okay. Well, thank you. Have a wonderful thank you. day. Thank you, ladies. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.